Well, it's just good to be with everybody. I, you know, I don't know if y'all know who all's around you in this, in this setting that we have here, all the names of people on tonight or many other times. But, you know, the Lord is, is using this time and, and we've got more time to seek the Lord, at least in terms of, um, I hate using this word, classes, but, but really our hearts, the reason why we're together, the reason why we um, get, get online and do these things is because of your hunger for the Lord, is because you, you, all of you, you plural, um, you, you really, you really, really want the Lord. You really, really love the Lord. You really, really know that you need the Lord because you, even if you weren't messing up, you know that, you know, more of Jesus, less of me is, um, is our clarion call of our hearts. And um, it's kind of helped me, too, because uh, I've been made aware more by the Holy Spirit of, of your needs, of your hunger, of your hurting, you know, uh, being cramped all the time inside a home uh, and uh, the pressures that go along with that, you know, financial pressures, uh, worrying about the future some of you have kids and what a what a what a load that is and yet um, you know here we are <laughs> here we are seeking him and wanting wanting him and uh, my prayer always is that the Holy Spirit would you know not anoint me but that the he would anoint you as it were that he would, um, say what he wants to say, whether it's through my words or through just him talking to you during this time where we've, we've gathered um, to speak Christ to us in a real way, in a living way. And um, so we're in uh, Genesis 17. Uh, I'll probably reiterate a few things that we uh, talked about last week. Uh, but uh, Genesis 17, verse 5 and 6. And it says, this the Lord speaking, and he says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Okay, so um, I think we talked a little bit about the fact that uh, in Genesis 15 and the other places that he talked about the covenant, uh, he mentioned the seed, but he, uh, he also just mentioned the land and the boundaries of the land and, and the things. And, and the things, the scriptures that follow this are going to show that his, this is a, a major expansion here. But not as major as it's going to be in Genesis 22. But this is a major expansion here. And um, um, I wrote, uh, here the Lord does two new things. First is that he no longer is making a covenant with Abram. He's making a covenant with Abraham. Now when he changed his name... He changed his view. He changed his walk because now they're walking. It's remember, it's a covenantal relationship, and they're walking together in the same things. See, that's what the covenant is: is we agree together on these same things. Well, little do does Abraham know, and little do we know. That for him, it is bringing us up into the things that are important to him, not just two people going, okay, I can agree that we'll do these things. It's, it's bringing us in 
in his heart and then bringing forth that uh, beyond the two people. And um, so the, that new thing is that he's, not, he's no longer talking to Abram. You, you say, well, it's the same person. Well, no, it's not. Not anymore. Um, God is moving forward. And I'm sure Abram didn't expect to become Abraham all of a sudden. He didn't expect God to show up. He didn't expect God to be ready to go. Let's go. Let's move forward. See, And you see that in the Exodus. You see that when they, they ate the lamb and they put the blood on the doorpost and, and they, you know, all that went with that, they did it with their, you know, gird, girded up and ready to go and their staff in hand because once you start covenantal relationships, it's no longer about you as an individual trying to make your way in this land. It's like, like with Israel coming out of Egypt. It's about us. And that's why I was talking to all of you when I began. It's about us making this journey. Us finding things of his heart instead of deep things to share and to impress people. Finding things that will, will uh, change us. And that's the beauty of this. I, I'm sure I'll get into it here in the notes. But the, the beauty of this name change is that he's bringing us into something that is already true in him. And so, um, uh, anyway, the, so the second thing is that he adds new factors that primarily require the participation of Abraham and all of his seed and even his purchased servants. So this is, this is this, see, this sounds more like the eternal God instead of, okay, well, you're, you're in the land here in this little place and then you go down into Egypt and then God's there and does something. And then, then you go back and then God shows up and then God appears over here and God appears over that. It's like, ain't no more appearing going to happen in that sense. From now on, we're going to be heading out together. And, uh, you know, and, and again, it's somewhere in my notes, maybe tonight, where... Um, that what that means to him instead of just what it means to us and and I know a lot of times and, and I understand this but a lot of times we are so trying to figure out how this applies to us when if we would give up us long enough to start seeing with eyes that care for his care we'll we'll discover some things hopefully tonight we'll discover some things about him and we'll discover that his movements are not random. His movements are very ordered based on what is in his heart. Not just for what he, he's calling us to do, but why he made the whole world and was in his heart toward this end. So, um, um, he adds new factors that primarily require the participation of Abraham not Abram. Abram was, it was just about faith and God would say, I will do this and you believe it. Here, it's Abraham, you are now going to be the father of the seed and I'm the father of the seed and we're going to walk together in that. We're going to walk together, it, together in that. So this is a wake-up call. Now, many people read this and it's not a wake-up call at all. It's a good story. It's an Old Testament story. All right. Um, so in this part of the conversation, God continues to set forth his promises to Abraham, not to the seed. This is first to Abraham. He changes his name to fit his status in calling those things that be not as though they were. I, again, I know that scripture. I can read it for you. It's in Mark 11, 22 and 23. Um, I, I know that that was a very popular scripture 
in the charismatic movement, and it was uh, primarily used to believe um, for something that is not, uh, to bring it into being, and and it, to be honest with you, it primarily centered around finances and cars and healing and, you know, external things for this life and for our life. It, it, it's in a certain sense, even if we're born again, it's still for the life that we had before the new birth, you know. It's our first birth life that we're really seeking to, 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 to you know, uh, foster up, to, to hold up in this world instead of his life in the world of the Father's heart and mind. Instead of Jesus' heart in the world of the Father's heart and mind. This is, the this is the basis upon which these conversations are going now. This is it. So, so it says, um, And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that, whatsoever, uh, or that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, our idea of have faith in God is that God will, you know, literally move mountains. Now, physically, literally, I, you know, I've been around a long time, you know, in this. You know, I was in my early 20s. And now I'm in my early 70s, and I've never heard anybody say that they, with God's faith, with faith in God, they literally moved a mountain. You know, miraculously I'm talking about. I'm not talking about bringing in steam shovels and stuff like that. Never heard of that one. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, uh, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, <clears throat> be thou removed. And be cast into the sea. Well, I haven't seen that. I haven't, I haven't heard anybody ever do that. So either, either we are very faithless or we totally are, have been applying God's ability to call those things that be not at this stage. They be not as though they were. Um, and then they will, it will come to pass. Because that's exactly what he's doing with Abraham, Abram when he calls him Abraham. He's saying, okay, the mountain uh, of Abram that was just stood in the way of our path and our journey, so that's why we never journeyed. We just, you know, I just told you stuff and said, believe it. Uh, that path is going to be made clear. You know, and, and where do we get a, a similar, you know, analogy? Well, we get it from uh, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist says, you know, the crooked should be made straight and the high should be made low and the low high and the da 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 and all this stuff. Well, he's talking about when Jesus comes and when he comes as he is and uh, then all, everything will be different. Different, different. Because it's not us anymore. It's not about us. We're just earthen vessels. You know, I was, at least one of my conferences, I said, we're dirt bags, earthen vessels. Just bags holding, holding dirt, except that we have the treasure in us. Okay? And so the Father, and, and we say, well, what good is that? You know, I've already got a poor self-image. See, he's not going to... By the teaching of Christ and Him crucified, He certainly is not trying to bolster our self-image. He's trying to ruin it. But He's trying to give us another image that we might be made in the image of Christ. That's not a self-image. That's a, a, a Christ-crucified image. That's the seed of the Father's heart that goes all the way back to this time. Thousands of years and God has not changed his mind his heart has not been moved away from his son 
And, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember reading in Isaiah when I was very young, and it says that uh, God created the earth to be inhabited. And uh, I remember um, thinking about that and going, I bet everybody thinks that he's talking about he made a big ball and he's going to put people on it. And, you know, when he puts it on there, he's going, that's my purpose for creating it. But we're the earth. We're earthen vessels. And he created us to be inhabited. It didn't say the world either. It said the earth to be inhabited. And this earth, we have this treasure in earth vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And so... Um, well, lest I talk too long again, uh, he calls him Abraham, which means father of a multitude. Uh, prior to this, and I'm, I mentioned some of these things last week, prior to this uh, name change, he was called exalted father, Abram. He will be exceedingly, but now being Abraham, he will be exceedingly fruitful with kings and nations coming out of him. Uh, with those words, he says, A father of many nations have I made thee. Okay, so we kind of we kind of miss something. <laughs> Not everybody, maybe none of you here that are watching and listening, um, but we do. We miss, you know, we miss things that seem that are written that seem unimportant because this part right here is important. So the important part is a father of many nations have I made thee. But he's talking about have I made thee? I've met, this, is, this is it. I'm making you that, but I am, uh, let's see, let me go on here. The Lord makes it clear that in his heart, which is where it counts, he has already made him this. Okay, he's already in his heart. All right. Well, isn't that really what the covenants are all about with the Lord? I mean, particularly this covenant, uh, the covenant with Abraham. I mean, you read the book of Galatians, the, the covenant, the, the covenant that he is making with us is the co Abrahamic covenant. You can read it in Galatians over and over and over. I mean, I remember at a certain juncture, I was shocked by that because I thought that it was a new covenant, like a third one, like the Abrahamic covenant, then the law, then the new covenant. But you come to find out in Galatians and other places, Romans, that it's, they all keep referring back to Abraham and to these things, these days. And um, uh, you, you realize that um, that that something that was in God is now starting to rise and come out. We may miss it, but it's coming out, and he's 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 opening up to us. Um, the Lord makes it clear that that in His heart, which is where it counts, He has already made Him this. Okay, so. As for me, you remember those words in what, verse 2 or 3 of the same chapter? <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, my covenant is with you. As far as I'm concerned, I have made you that. But, and I'm, I'll say it here because I don't know where it's going to be. I have made you that, but this isn't just what it was from the day that I met you to, walk, to, to, to have faith in what I tell you about you. This is a whole new ball game where you have to walk with me in this. Okay. In, in what? In these words. Yes, in these words. You have to walk with me in these words. And we have to, every jot and tittle, we've got to be circumspect with the Lord and walk with with him in that no 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 I could be stoned for saying that no we have to find his heart we have to hear his heart we have to seek his heart 
we have to say, you did a lot of talking in that book. I would like to start seeing your heart in it instead of just knowing the, you know, the Pharisees did that. They had a, the, the Pentateuch and all of that memorized. I mean, which included this story right here and never saw what Paul saw when he came along and then he starts writing an Abraham covenant and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, this is a whole new thing. It was in his heart from all the way back in early Genesis. And we're just now finding it out in, in the New Testament. You know. All right. Um, but then he talks about <clears throat> What, okay, so he's talking about what he has done. This is, as far as his heart's concerned, I have made you father of many nations. I have made you Abraham. I have, here it is, a father of many nations. I have made thee. Next, okay. But then he talks about what he will do in the future. Did y'all catch that before? Just that little bit that we read? That, that he's talking about, Abraham, this is what I have made you, and here's what I will do, okay? So, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. The term exceedingly fruitful goes beyond what was said before. God is now talking about nations and kings and and the seed becoming uh, filling uh, as it were filling the earth well let's start here because we got we got nations and kings in us you know we got all these things in us and you know we got you know six kings and another one comes along or what is it you know tenth or whatever that needs to, all of those need to be overthrown, you know, and uh, we don't even realize that. Um, so, so let's talk about this new name a little more then. I don't want to go too far into the other part yet. May I have a drink of sweet tea? Do y'all have some drink with you? Click. All right, a new name. There are many things that God says concerning his people as positive declarations, okay? We are his church. We are his building. We are his temple. We are living stones. And you can go on and on and on. Well, how many really are that? You know, how many really are his temple? I mean, how many, you know... Uh, I've often said that in our minds, we've become a religious edifice, but to God, he never called it a religious edifice in that sense. He called it the house of God. This is where I will dwell with you and among you. And uh, so this body and this being um, is supposed to be that place where his habitation is. Um, his desire always was not to have a temple, Old Testament temple or New Testament temple or New Testament temple Baptist church or any of that kind of stuff. It's always been right here. And if it's his home, he doesn't just come home on Sunday. See, um, we might even go to church and go, well, it's Sunday. Jesus has come to, to the temple. No, that's his home. <laughs> you know, he's, everybody else is going to the temple and he's going home because this is where he wants to live five days a week and two weekend days all the time. Here, right here, always. All right, so... Uh, but God help us not to fall into the deception of thinking that his declaration of what we are is sufficient and thereby to deny ourselves the workings 
and dealings of God in our lives that will truly and effectual make us to be what he declares us to be. In other words, and I'm sure again, I'll say this here. Uh, in other words, um, he's not just being the magic man who makes you something and he says, well, I made you that and da, 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 da. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. He know. See, he understands that. Maybe we don't understand that. You ever have you ever prayed, God? Why don't you do something? Why don't you? You know. And he's going. Well, you know, you you're supposed to be walking with me, not trying to get me to walk with you down there. We made this covenant, and you agreed, and you entered into it. You know, how much thought does the average Christian give to the fact that he's in covenant with God? And if he did, what does that mean? You know, um, well, you know, uh, here's, here's what it means. Here's what, the, here's what it says in Ezekiel and Isaiah, I guess. I can't remember. Jeremiah. Uh, no. Yeah. The new covenant. When he talks about that, he says a new heart, uh, a new spirit. I will give you my spirit. Uh, he says all that kind of stuff. But how many Christians really have that new heart? I mean, how many? How many are so... See, one thing would be, let's write on the board all the things you should do. And that way, we'll know. You know, Lord, just give me a... Um, what's it called when uh, you get a new oh, job description? Just give me a job description. And I'll be right there with you. Yes, sir. He wrote it on the fleshly tables of your heart. But where's the proof of that? Well, we see little proof of it because we take that as still being with as Abram, with only trusting what God said instead of walk now before me and I will be your God. Um, and there being a participation and the participation isn't just you do your part and I'll do mine. The participation is that you participate in the heart of the covenant with the God who made it. You're participating in his heart. And this is, this is the miracle of him saying, you are now Abraham. Uh, Somewhere along here, we'll, we'll get into that. But it's like a, a, an incredible miracle, but it's so much greater than a miracle because it's just what's in God's heart for his son and therefore for you. Okay? Um, so, When God appeared to Abram and announced, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for father of many nations have I made thee. When the Lord changed Abram's name, God was reinforcing his intentions toward Abram getting the seed by changing Sarah's name too. He's changing Abram into Abraham, and in the next chapter, He's going to change Sarah, uh, Sarai into Sarah. And in doing that, he's bringing them into something that is already true in his heart. Um, beginning with Abraham, God began changing some people's names to reflect his intentions in their life, to reflect his intentions in their life. Okay, um, for example, he changed Jacob, his name to Israel, and he changed Saul's name to Paul. By changing Abram, exalted father, to Abram, father of a multitude, he brought him into a relationship, and here it is. By changing his name from Abram uh, to Abraham, he brought him into a relationship that mirrored God's own future. Because God's a father, and he has a son. 
and God's plan for his son and God's plan to be a father of a multitude and God's plan for his seed to fill all the earth, if you will. And he's talking to Abram, Abram to, to come into being Abraham. And he's, 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 it's like this. He's talking to him and he's going, I am mirroring to you what I'm all about. And I'm bringing you in to the most precious part of who I am. And I'm a father. And I have a seed. And I made you that. And I call you that because I brought you in covenant. Now you're in covenant with me. And I want that reflected. I don't just want it taught. I don't just want it um, uh, prayed about. I, I want it reflected. I want this. And I, I, I'm thankful, if you will, God, you know, could, would say, I'm thankful that we're in covenant upon the same basis and on the same thing that is eternally important. Not just you getting a son and having some kids and saying, well, praise God, I'm not just an exalted father without kids. Not that. But you have been brought into that. You've been... Uh, uh, I, I'm seeking to reflect my intention into your life. Now, if you, you put this same mind on, if you put this same reality on, then it'll be a true reflection and not just a copy. You know, a copy of it. Just running a copy through and then you make a copy of a copy and then a copy of a copy and after a while you can't even read it or see what it is um, because everybody's just copying the copy but nobody has the original and the original intention that brought brought that to Abram to Ab to, so that he could become Abraham father of a multitude of this seed all right uh, just as sure as God is a father, so Abram will become not just a new name, but he will, uh, he will not just become Abram in name, but he will become Abraham in being. He will not just be, become Abraham in name, but he will become Abraham. Not not, what if that was not a name? What if God's going, you're going to be a father of a multitude just like me. Now let's walk in this together and let's let you grow into this. And he does. He does. And you know, you know the end, you know, Genesis 22 and, and God one day pops up and says, take now thy son, thine only son, thy son whom thou lovest. And Bring him up on a place that I will show you and offer him as a burnt offering, the son, the son of your love, the son that you love, the son. See, it's all heading in that direction. And guess what? Abraham's faith ended up being that. And that's the faith that we're supposed to mirror. Not that you can go into a foreign country and, and you know, thrive or anything else, but that you can have that faith that offers up the Son to the Father as a burnt offering. And you can live that way. And that, and that it can be not a, not a teaching that Randy Nussbaum or anybody else taught me, but rather I came into covenant with the living God myself. And I saw that he wanted me to reflect that forth. And I, and I saw that it was... Um, it, it comes about only by him bringing in me into a relationship and saying, I want you to mirror this in you from me and to others that they could catch the image in your mirror that is me till we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, 
It is not meant to only be a name change, but a union into oneness with the Lord and a reality of his heart focus. So this is, if you could, if there's any, we, we always see this from Abraham's side. If we could see it from God's side, that um, it is um, uh, a reality of his heart focus. This is, this is his focus. This is always his focus. This was his focus before the foundation of the world. This will be his focus when earth is no more. This is his focus. And it's not just, you know, precious Jesus, you know, gentle and mild, you know, meek and mild. Um, you know, Jesus of Nazareth or or, or Jesus who just died to save me from my sins. This is eternal. In God's heart, it's not. He's not just going, oh, I really hope, you know, I really want, you know, a bunch of people to get saved and I'm just going to send my son to die. He sent his son to reflect back the father. He's doing what Abraham should have done and what we should be doing. Jesus came and he's reflected what God is like. This is hanging on that cross. This is what God is like. He's a crucified God. Paul says, God forbid that I preach anything. Okay, well, here we go. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be preaching algebra. Or you shouldn't be preaching American history along with what you're saying here about Jesus. He's not talking about you know, God forbid that I know anything among you except Christ and him crucified in that way. He's not putting those things. He's saying, I'm not going to teach Jesus of Nazareth. He, you know, what he did when he walked this earth wasn't it. That was, you know what that was like? That was like if his name was Abram. Because no fruit had come. John 12, 24 says that. No fruit came until this seed fell into the ground and died. Well, Isaac never became Isaac until he went up to Moriah and was offered up and he became the altered son. And I don't mean altered meaning changed, but the altar. He became an altered son. And from that point on, this was the right relationship between Abram and his son because it reflected the father and his son. And it was real to him. And God says in the New Testament, it's about the faith of Abraham. And God's pointing to all of that. And we're going, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trusting God. Whatever. I don't know why I get so excited. I guess I, I care. <laughs> I care about you and me and us and the heart of the Lord, and I know you care. I, I know that I couldn't even respond this way if you didn't care. I know that. I know that it's not me. It's not just that, you know, that I'm a man of God or any of that kind of stuff. It's because of your hearts, and it draws out. If you were just dead lumps of clay, the Spirit of God would go, what's the point of this, you know? It's your heart. It's your heart that wants the Lord. It's you that that He's reaching and loving and 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 throwing His arms around His Son and saying, "Yeah, you know, this is what I got." And this is and then look, Abram came along and then he he got that and then you know Jacob became Israel and then he got Joseph and he had the son and you know it's it's like it's like. I know that you're going to guide your generations, you know, your seed. <clears throat> All right. So, I'll read that last sentence. It is not meant to only be a name change, but a union into oneness with the Lord and a reality of his heart focus. It is based on the assurance that the Father wants his Son. It's based on that assurance. You know, I say this all the time. Um... If we just realized what was the true focus of his heart and always has been, then we could, we could easily, you know, I mean, it would be like, uh, excuse my bad example of this, but it would be like a father having two sons and, and uh, one of the sons is always trying to do stuff and, and uh, please him and everything. Uh, but what the father really enjoys and relaxes with, excuse my examples, I don't claim they're Christian example, uh, 
uh, he likes to smoke his black cigar. He just likes to enjoy that. But the, that one son's just going around doing all this and can I prop your feet up and can I do this? And you know, would you like me to get you something to drink and all that kind of stuff. And the other son comes in and says, hey dad, look what I bought you. He goes, oh my God, I was just out. He lights it up and sits back and, and no, I don't smoke black cigars, but, uh, and he sits back and, and he just enjoys it, you know, and he's just, you know, and, uh, and the other son, and this isn't, isn't this the prodigal son's perverted story <laughs> that, and that is the elder, I, I have always done what you like, and I've, I have pushed the limits of all the things that I've tried to think of that I can do for you. And the prodigal son ends up going, you know what? He's, it's not about me after all. He's looking and seeing the invisible son that is inside of me, him who is invisible. And he's re relating to that, and I'm going to give him that back. Let's go to the altar and offer the fatted calf, and then let's eat it. And then, Father, let's just dance our little hearts away for all eternity. So, forgive the black cigar example. <laughs> um, so, um, God was, let's see, what time have we got here? Yeah. I think we'll stop here. I think the Lord has blessed us with a, with a good time hearing his heart and the Spirit of God uh, wanting us to, um, to enter into these things and to not, you know, it's not like we got to enter in the land or we're going to die because of unbelief. It's like, let's follow the cloud. And let's, when it gets dark, let's not pray for light. Let's follow the fire by night, you know. In other words, what he has provided, I, I fear that some people, he's already provided a lot. And it's just in, in journal form or it's in, in, you know, doctrinal form in the, uh, the file cabinets of our brain or something, but they're, we don't access them. And so we have to keep praying for a new, Lord, be with me. Lord, do this right now. Lord, change this. Lord, all that. And, you know, it's like, well, I'm all of that unto you. And I am your peace, and I am, oh, Lord, give me peace, you know. You see what I'm saying. And uh, that we, that we hear him, not just hear from him. Let's pray. Father, may your spirit that is alive and and he's on that word and he's making that word quick and powerful and sharp. May it, like what Jesus said to his disciples, let these sayings sink down into your ears. The Son of Man must be betrayed and crucified. Father, may we, Jesus he keeps trying to explain that, Father, to his disciples at that time. And he's still trying to explain it so that we can comprehend things through the altered son, through the one that is the son that is with the father and the father with the son in covenant to bring forth your image. Father, continue to draw us. We love you. We hunger. We hunger individually. But Father, when we're together, when we're together, we hunger collectively. We hunger collectively, and we we can sense we can sense the the bait that you're putting out in front of us, trying to draw us into you and into your heart. Thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit of God. Continue, continue to open our heart and eyes. In Jesus' name.
and for his sake. Amen. Amen.